Hey, Todd Baginski here. Today I've got a fun little video that really has nothing to do with any power apps I did for any clients. I actually built this power app just for fun. And so this power app came about because the other day my son said to me, he said, Dad, what's it called on the opposite side of the world from where we're sitting at? And I really, I didn't know what the word for that was. So I went and I looked it up and I found out it's called an antipode. That's a fun word to say, isn't it? Antipode. So I decided to make a little power app to calculate where antipodes were. And I decided to make that power app so no matter where I'm standing on Earth, I can open that power up and find the antipode or the opposite side of the Earth. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I built this app. It's so easy. Let's get started. Okay, so believe it or not, I actually built this power app in 32 minutes from the second I started trying to build it until it actually worked for every single hemisphere combination we have on planet Earth here. So that's how easy this is to do. I'm going to be able to show you how to build this much, much quicker. So the first place I started was, all right, how do I check an antipode? Is there anywhere out there that can show me antipodes on Earth and I can use it to check my math? And what's that formula like? So that's when I found this really cool website here called antipodesmap.com. And so I found that one of the antipodes of, of a place I've been near, at least, is down in New Zealand, uh, Christchurch. So when you put in the address of a location, it shows up here with this little guy with his head sticking through the earth. And then here's his head pops out on the opposite side of the earth. It's pretty funny. So this one's over near Spain here. And so you can check many different ones at the bottom by just, you know, clicking on one of these. When you click it, it changes it. So here we can see Argentina and China. That's another antipode is there as well. So they also tell you here, thankfully for me, they even told me uh, the uh, equation and an example converter here that I needed to use to calculate an antipode. And so really, uh, this is what your, your equation looks like in that section there. So armed with this information, I set out to build my power app. And the first thing I knew is I needed a map in my power app. So a quick little search on Bing or Google and I found this article here and I'd done this before but I had a feeling I might turn this into a video so I wanted to find the article I could share with other people to show them how you actually put a map into Power Apps. So that this article will show you how to do the same thing I did here. So next thing I did is I created my Power App. So here is my Antipodes Power App. And as you can see, here's my Auckland, New Zealand location where I manually typed in the latitude and the longitude in these two text boxes. And when I click Start Digging, it's going to take that latitude and longitude, run the Antipode calculation against it, and then put the Antipodes latitude and longitude in these labels at the bottom and render where is that antipode on earth right there. Another feature that I have built into this app, as I mentioned, I wanted the app to be able to do this no matter where I was. And so if I click this little toggle right here and I turn it on, it's going to use my current latitude and longitude right here. And it's going to convert it into the antipode down here at the bottom. And so here you can see I am near Cincinnati, Ohio. And if actually I started digging a hole through the earth, I would get through the core and the mantle and all that good stuff and probably get burned to a crisp. But when I burned out, popped out the other side, here I would be right in the middle of the Indian Ocean off the coast of Australia. So if I turn that off, then again, like I showed you, I can click the Start Digging button. I don't even have to click it. Did you notice that? I actually, when I click this toggle, I'm programmatically clicking this button here so that I can just automatically calculate 
the one that I manually entered there. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how I built the app. So the first thing that I did to build the app was just put all my controls on here. I've got a label, as you can see, for the current or the manual, as I call it, where I manually enter my antipode lat and long. So here is the label I call current latitude, and I have another label called current longitude. In both of those places, notice I'm using the location dot longitude or the location dot latitude. These are built into Power Apps, and Power Apps allows me to get back the GPS location of where I'm running right now. The next thing that I did was I created the text input boxes here that allow me to type in that manual location of the latitude and longitude. And here you can see I hard-coded a value. So I've got the one for Christchurch in here and another one for Via Mercedes and Argentina. So I was able to test it with a couple different locations there. The next thing I did was I needed to get that Bing map on the page, right? Now I've got a way to get my latitude and longitude. How do I render that? Well, here is my Bing map. And so all I did here was I added an image control and I called it image location. And in the image property here, all I've got is basically a URL. This is Bing Maps REST API. So all I have to do is tell it this, plus here's my toggle. If the toggle use current location is true, then go get the location latitude value. If not, go get the value that I manually entered into the text box right here and here for my latitude and longitude. The next thing that I put in there is this slash three. So that's the zoom level of my map. And then I also have what size I want the map. I picked 400 by 400. It, it matches up exactly with the size of my image control, as you can see right here. The next thing that I need to pass is this and letter P, letter P parameter right there. Oh, pardon me. This parameter right here is for the push pin. And so I'm passing in the latitude and the longitude for the push pin. And then I tell it with this semicolon 66 that that's the shape of that push pin that I want to use. That's the one that looks like this, right? That you see right here. So I could change that 66 to be a different value and you'd see a different shape there in my map. And then I specify what layers I want on the map. In this case, I say, give me the base map and show any buildings. And finally, I need to pass in my Bing map developer key. Now, this article that I talked about before here, it tells you inside of this article where you need to go to get this right here, to get your URL for your Bing map developer key. You could do this with the Google map or any map for that matter that has this type of REST API. So after I did that, well, you may be wondering where this REST uh, API key is coming from. And I just put that back here in my other screen. And so here I have a text box where I type in that REST API key. And then I've got it available throughout my app. And so that right there is basically how I render the image of the current location or the manual location. Now, the fun part comes when we actually convert it into the antipode. But before I show you that, I'm gonna show you the map that displays the antipode. Notice this is the exact same code I've got here, but instead of checking, am I using the current location or not, I'm actually going to reference these, these values right here. This is a label where I'm gonna store the antipode's latitude. This is another label where I will store the longitude. And so I reuse those for my center point on the map, as well as where I place my push pin, just like I did before. So how do we calculate the antipode? That's kind of the fun part. So let's take a look at that calculation now. Let's open up the code and sort of my start digging button. So here is the code. And, and one thing to point out about this code is I'm breaking this down into two pieces. 
The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the latitude's antipode, and then I'm going to calculate the longitude's antipode. And so to calculate the latitude's antipode, I use this code right here to determine is the latitude in the northern hemisphere. And if it is, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a minus sign in front of it to convert it to the southern hemisphere. If it turns out that the latitude that I'm working with is already in the southern hemisphere, then what I'm going to use is the absolute value to convert it to the northern hemisphere. So that calculation is real easy. Is it just, do I have a minus sign in this or not? And if I do, remove it. And if I don't, add it to the beginning. The longitude is slightly more complicated, but not much. So to calculate the longitude, this is how I, I do it. I, I basically do the same check, but I'm checking is the longitude in the Eastern Hemisphere or the Western Hemisphere. And if I find out that the longitude's in the Eastern Hemisphere, what I need to do is I need to subtract that longitude from 180, 180 degrees, and then I need to retain the minus sign. On the other hand, if the longitude is not in the Eastern Hemisphere, I still subtract it from 180 to get the opposite, but then I remove the minus sign, which forces it into the other hemisphere as far as latitude and longitude is concerned. Now, you can see in both cases, no matter if I'm up here in the latitude or longitude, I'm setting global variables to indicate what my latitude and longitude are. And so here you can see that value right there, as well as how I'm setting it down here for the longitude. Okay, so now, now you can see where I set these global variables, and let, let's close the loop on it again. So again, when those global variables are set, as you can see, they are the text property value of these labels at the bottom. So you can see what those labels look like and what those values are in there. And so therefore, when I have my mapping code here and it refers to the label, that means that the global variable value that's assigned to that label is what it's going to get out of here. You know, I could have put the global variable here as well. It doesn't matter. They're both the same matter uh, and value in this case. So there you have it. That's how you can build yourself a little app that will tunnel you to the other side of the world and show you where you might be. Hope you had fun learning on this one just like I did. Have a great day.